President Obama's approval rating plummeting among active duty members of our armed services. According to the new survey from the Military Times, President Obama's approval has hit a record low of 15 percent, down from 35 percent in 2009. His disapproval rating shot from 40 percent back in 2009 to 55 percent now. Our next guest is not surprised by those dismal numbers because President Obama has never given the military the resources to accomplish the missions uh, that he has ordered them to complete. Joining us now is retired four-star Army General, former Army Vice Chief of Staff General Jack Keane, Chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, Fox News military analyst. Good to have you with us, General. Good to be here, Lou. Those numbers are, I mean, that, they talk about, I mean, those are appalling, dismaying. Surely he must be hurt to the quick. Yeah. They are really driven by policy decisions. This isn't about the person. This is about the policy. And the fact is, pulling out of Iraq, they know what happened. They knew what would happen. The soldiers who are out there, young sergeants, young officers, more senior people, they're all turned into this. They, un they understand what the issues are. They also know that Obama never gave him a crystal and betray us all the forces to do the surge in Afghanistan, then pulled them out prematurely. And they know he's made a decision to pull the forces out of Afghanistan right now. They know the guys that are there, they know that none of that makes any sense. So much, it seems, has not made sense for a better part of now more than a decade. It is truly extraordinary that we are in this situation. And I, for one, don't see a, a, a path out of it. Uh, either from the Republican opposition, from the Senate, from the uh, House, uh, certainly not from the White House. Do you? No. And from a foreign policy and, and national security issue, the fact that we have disengaged from the world and the president, I think, has seized the United States as a different role in the world, has made the world a more dangerous place. Radical Islam terrorism is up four times, four times in the last four years. It wasn't too long ago, after bin Laden was killed, that we were saying, Al-Qaeda's on its heels, this thing is about over. And the truth is, at that moment, it was on the rise. He, the White House doesn't even want to use the word Taliban when describing mm. uh, that horrible attack in which over 100 children were killed at a school in uh, Peshawar. Uh, he, he, he doesn't want to use the expression radical Islamist because he's afraid mm. somebody might be offended. We had a, a general uh, last week at the Pentagon say we don't want to use any longer Islamic State. We want you to call the Islamic State Daesh because that is a pejorative the general seems to feel or has been so advised by the linguistic uh, experts. Uh, I mean, what in the world are we coming to that a general is sitting there telling the media what he wants them to call the enemy when we can't even get our White House, our commander in chief, or the Pentagon to say radical Islamist terrorists? <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't such a serious issue, it'd be laughable. But the fact is, we have never defined radical Islam, not just the name of it, we've never defined the movement. Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with an ideological movement like that if you're not willing to talk about it in terms of what is its ideology? Why, are so many, why does it have appeal to so many young people in that part of the world? Why can't we put, talk about that? Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we counter that narrative? Well, you know, actually, I've done that uh, on this very broadcast. Did it uh, 12 years ago uh, as our special uh, forces and our, uh, our clandestine services were moving into Afghanistan uh, and ultimately defeating the Taliban with uh, leading uh, Islamic scholars, uh, Arabic scholars, uh, Middle East uh, experts. We defined in discussion. Radical Islamist is the correct term, but is the one to which we adhere. Uh, the fact is, that hasn't been done by the federal government. It hasn't done for political reasons, not because of any interest in being real, honest, or straightforward with the American people. It is mind-boggling. Why is there this resistance to naming our enemy? Yeah. And then, of course, if you're not willing to name it, and if you're not willing to define it, then you don't have a comprehensive strategy to deal with it. We sit here 13 years after 9-11, and it's pretty sad commentary. We do not have a comprehensive strategy to deal with this ideological movement. And we, it's not that we would defeat it by ourselves. We need lots of help in doing it. But we have not done that. Yeah, we don't need a lot of help to kill the enemy. We do need a little to 
understand them better and uh, perhaps uh, contain them. But to kill them, do we really need a lot of help? No, but we need all of them. It's from those countries that this movement grows. And that counter-narrative and undermining this ideology, we need those countries all in to help us do that. And we can help them also participate in the conflict. We have skill sets that we've learned these last 13 years. You know, I, I will confess as we wrap up here, General, I fear that we're having this discussion maybe 10 years too late. Well, I'm still optimistic. All right. I think we're one leader away. You know, I've, <laughs> I'm afraid history is supporting you. We seem to have spent much of the last decade or two one leader away. Well, we know we've always got the real leader here. General Jack Keane, thanks for being with us. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Good, Good to good see you. Scene. Merry Christmas. Time now for a look at our online poll results. We ask whether you believe uh, on a matter of national security the White House should have called Sony Pictures rather than wait for Sony to call them. 87% of you said yes. Would have been, that would have been sort of not leading from behind, though, right? Be sure to vote in tonight's poll. Is there any way President Obama, Eric Holder, Al Sharpton, or Mayor de Blasio can ever really make amends for their campaign of ignorance against law enforcement agencies and officers? We'd like to hear from you. Cast your vote at LouDobbs.com. The war of words between Senators Rand Paul and Marco Rubio escalating, if you could imagine. The issue, normalizing diplomatic relations with Cuba. This time, Senator Rubio says Paul has no idea what he's talking about. After the senator from Kentucky supported that uh, initiative, Paul fired back, calling Rubio an isolationist. This fight playing out on the Sunday talk show host. It was terrible. Well, first of all, Rand, if he wants to become the chief cheerleader of Obama's foreign policy, he certainly has a right to do that. I'm going to continue to oppose the Obama-Paul Obama foreign policy on Cuba because I know it won't lead to freedom and liberty for the Cuban people, which is my sole interest here. Paul didn't like that. He tweeted, quote, Marco Rubio forgot to mention his support for Obama's funding of the Muslim Brotherhood, arming Islamic rebels, and Hillary's war in Libya. Take that, Marco. Up next, a multi-layered campaign of ignorance aimed at the nation's local and state law enforcement agencies, prefacing an execution of two New York City cops. Accountability assigned here next.